Shalom. Today we're going con to continue studying about how the verb structure in Hebrew works. And today we're going to start the conjugation of verbs. The 501 Hebrew Verbs book is absolutely invaluable for helping you to understand how verbs work in Hebrew. It is uh, based on modern Hebrew, so for one thing there will be biblical roots that you don't find in this book. And for another thing, you might find some slightly different spelling with uh, extra vowels, uh, extra letters to take the place of certain vowels that would be used in uh, the biblical spelling. But as far as breaking down the verbs in the tenses and the binyanim, this book is uh, definitely worth whatever you pay for it. I recommend that you get a new one so that you know that all the pages are intact. But they're easy enough to find. Uh, and I strongly recommend it. This is just two different covers of two different editions. I don't know what is current right now. So when you look at a verb that's conjugated in a sentence, the way that the letters are put together, the, the prefixes, the suffixes, the infixes, and the vowel configuration will tell you all these things about that verb. It will tell you the tense, we're going to look at that. It will tell you the person, we'll look at that. And it will tell you the binyan, something that we have already uh, looked at. There are only three tenses in Hebrew, which is a, a great bargain compared to about 15 tenses that there are in English. So uh, they have what we would call the past tense, it's the same as our past tense. And um, sometimes it's called the perfect tense for the idea of completed action. They have a present tense, which is also called the participle tense. That means action that is happening right now. And there is a future tense, which is called the imperfect tense, which means that it is not yet completed. You will also find a command form and an infinitive form. We're not going to get into those in this lesson. So in the uh, past tense, or the perfect tense, and in the future, or imperfect tense, verbs are conjugated for 10 people. So you can tell by the prefixes, the suffixes, which person we're talking about. These 10 people are the first person singular, which we would consider to be I, the first person plural, which is we. We only have one word in English for you. There used to be different forms, but they have gone by the wayside. In Hebrew, there are four different forms. Uh, singular masculine, if we're talking about one man, if I'm talking to one man, I will use the singular masculine. One woman will be the singular feminine, uh, masculine plural and feminine plural for you, or y'all, or you guys, or you ins, or wherever you're from. Deep in our heart, we long to have more than one word for you. Uh, the third person we would consider to be he, she, and they. Uh, there is no it in Hebrew. So uh, when you read about, for example, the menorah, it's talking about uh, his bowls and his knops and this kind of thing. Uh, it's nice that they didn't use it because there is no it. But the menorah, in fact, is feminine. It should have been her knops and so on. Anyway, these are the 10 people that past and future verbs are conjugated for. We can tell by the conjugation, as we said, which person we're talking about. Looking again at our binyan chart, um, there are slightly different conjugations for each one of the binyanim, but each one of the binyanim will be conjugated for those 10 people. We're going to look at some examples. Now one of the clues you have in the past tense is in the nifal, the conjugation will always begin with the nun. Uh, in the hefil, it will begin with a he, and also in the hofal. The hitpa'el will always begin with the he tav. So these are some little clues. These are strictly for the perfect tense, for the past tense, for the conjugations of these binyanim. 
Now, in Hebrew, the tense, the past perfect tense, is indicated by a suffix. So if we start over in the right-hand column, we have the conjugations for the 10 people. So for I did something, those verbs, regardless of the binyan, will always end in this suffix, tav yud, t. For the first person masculine singular, you did something, it will end in ta. For the second person feminine singular, it's going to end in this ta with a shva at the end. We will look at some examples. The third person masculine singular, he did something, will carry, usually carry, the vowel configuration of the name of the binyan. So just looking back very simply, if the binyan is pa'al, then we will see those two vowels, that kamatz and that patach, in the third person masculine singular, he did something. So for example, we have shamar, katav, lamad. Those are all pa'al, the kal, the easiest form, the simplest form. For example, if we have speak, speak, the, the noun to speak from the root davar, dalid, bet, resh, this appears in a pal conjugation. So the third person masculine will be debear. We won't see dabar, we see debear. Those same vowels follow the name of the binyan. For the uh, third person feminine singular, she did something that's going to end in a hey. Moving to the other column, if we did something, that will end in this suffix new. If the all y'all, the group of people, you did something for the masculine, that verb will end in tem. For the feminine, it will end in ten. And for they is the same for masculine and feminine. The verb will end in u. This applies to all the binyanim. These suffixes will always be the same for these people. Okay, let's have some examples. From Psalm 18.22, we see ki shamarti darche Yehovah. Because, now here's the root, shamar, we see the ending on the end, t, that means I have kept your ways, the ways of Yahweh, because I have kept, the root is shamar, and the suffix t tells me that I did it. Nehemiah 1.7, chavol chavalnu lach. The lo shamar new et ha mitzvot. Here it's the same root, shamar. We see the suffix new. That means we, in this case, lo didn't keep the mitzvot. We, we is indicated by the new. This is a pa'al verb, but the suffix is always the same, new, for we did something. Here we see in Genesis 37, 11, the Aviv Shamar et Hadavar, and his father Shamar. It, we know that he did something by the vowel arrangement. See, there's no suffix on, on the, um, the third person masculine singular. The vowels are the same as the name of the binyan, Shamar, his father, uh, kept the idea. In other words, he was watching to see what was going to happen. Psalm 119, verse 167, Shamra nafshi edatecha. So here we see the verb first. This is the verb. It's ending in hey. We know that it's a feminine. She did something. She kept. Now, what is the subject here? Nefesh. My soul. Your soul uh, happens to be a feminine noun in Hebrew. So we will say, she kept, my soul kept 
your uh, testimonies. Deuteronomy 5.32, we see the first verb, U shemar tem la'asot ka'asher tziva Yehovah. The ending is that tem ending that is a plural, and all y'all, y'all kept, y'all guarded to do what uh, Yahweh commanded. So the suffix tells us that tem, all y'all did it. In Exodus 31, 16, Vishamru v'nei Yisrael at HaShabbat. The ending here, that U ending means they. They did something. Who's doing it? B'nei Yisrael. They are going to keep the Sabbath, keep or guard it. So we see the endings are consistent. These are some pa'al verbs. Shamar is a pa'al verb here. Okay, in Deuteronomy 2.4, we see this verb that is highlighted, nishmartem. Do you remember what we said about the nifal in the past tense? We're just looking at the past tense today. The nifal will conjugate and we'll see that nun. You see the shamar in the middle. The tem ending is the same. It means all y'all. And in this case, the nifal is a passive. All y'all were kept. All y'all were guarded. In Psalm 37, 28, here again is the same nifal form, nishmaru. But in this case, the ending tells us that, that it was they. They were guarded. As we said, the root to speak, uh, from the root, dalad bet resh, is a PL form. Uh, let's do the, the bottom scripture first, Genesis 44, 2. And uh, we see the form is deber. Uh, this is talking about Yosef, and Yosef is the one uh, who spoke. We see the vowel configuration is the same as the binyan because this is the third person masculine singular. He spoke. So it has the same vowels as pl because it's a pl verb. It becomes deber. Uh, on the upper uh, scripture, Genesis 24, 33, we see slightly different. It doesn't say da bar. It says d bar t. It's D bar, though that vowel is for the PL part of the verb. The T at the end, though, is the same as I spoke. So the T tells us it's I, and the other vowels tell us it's PL. We will look at some he feel verbs in the past tense. Um, here we see this verb, he shmiu. The hey at the beginning and the yud in fix tell us it's he feel. That's going to give a different light on what the verb means. The u at the end, though, means they did something. The root here is shama, shin, mem, ayin. Shama, you know, means to hear or to listen. Remember, the he feel is a causative form. So, in other words, it means to cause to hear. We have the idea of uh, making announcement or making other, causing other people to hear something. In this case, the subject is tsi'ireha, her young ones. What did they cause? What did they cause to hear? Other people to hear. The tsa'aka, the cry. So they made a cry, but it doesn't say they made a cry. It says they caused other people to hear their cry. In Genesis 24, 21, we see this verb, hitzliach. Uh, the he at the beginning and the yud infix tell us that it is a he feel. Remember, that's going to be causative. It's in its very barest form. So we know that he did something. Uh, in this case, we're going to see if he did something. And the root, uh, tzalach, Tzari Lamed Chet, 
means to prosper or do well. In this case, uh, the servant has gone looking for a bride for Isaac, and he is wondering if Yahweh has prospered, has caused to prosper the way. Here is some examples in um, the Hitpa'el. We're going to see uh, in Genesis 24:40, the same chapter here, Hit Halachti. So remember in the past tense, in the perfect tense, Hitpa'el verbs will begin with He Tav. We see that. We see the root He Lamid. Kaf, which means to walk, and then we see the T ending. Remember, the T ending is for I did something. But it wasn't just that I walked, but I walked with. This concept of walking together with is usually used uh, for the person who walks with God. And uh, we're going to see uh, here in a minute some of those people, but Abraham was one of those people. Noah and Enoch. When it refers to those people, it says they walked with God. It's not just holech. It's not the pa'al form. It's the hit pa'al form. Hit halech. In this case, hit halachti, uh, whom I have walked with, whom I have walked before, talking about Yahweh. In Genesis six nine, uh, here is the again hit halech. And in this case, it's talking about Noah, Noah walking with Elohim. So we see the prefix, uh, the Hetav, that tells us that it's the Hitpa'el. And then we see the root, Holech, which means to walk. It's conjugated for he. It's the simplest form of, of the verb. There's no other suffixes, just the root that tells us that he did something. In Job 38.16, we see uh, that this is conjugated hit halach ta. Remember that ta ending means you did something. Um, in this case, uh, wondering if you have uh, walked the depths uh, of the earth with, with God. In uh, Zechariah 1.11, here's a form hit halach nu. It has the same uh, hey tav at the beginning. We see the root in the middle, hey lamed kaf, and then the ending for we did something, talking about the angels having walked through the earth here and there. So the suffixes for all these 10 persons are very consistent across all the binyanim. If you learn those 10 suffixes, you can identify the past tense. So it's a good time now to take a break. What I would strongly suggest that you do is begin to look in your Hebrew Tanakh and just begin to read through the various scriptures and see if you can begin to identify these suffixes so that you become comfortable with them. If you have um, any grammar book and you can work any kind of exercises, that's good but you should really have a good grasp on what the suffixes are for the past tense as you, uh, before you continue into doing anything else. So uh, while you're taking your break, remember to simita inayim al hashamayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.